For my thoughts on all the latest happenings in the NFL in a completely relaxed, unscripted format, be sure to check out my channel, JG9 News. And now, on with our feature presentation. I want to give you this bizarre hypothetical scenario. This man right here is Harrison Bucker, and he is an unbelievable kicker, and has been for quite some time as the man for the Kansas City Chiefs for the last seven years. No, he's never made a Pro Bowl, simply because he happens to play in the same conference as Justin Tucker. And only one kicker per conference makes it, but make no mistake about it, there are few kickers in football who are better than this man right here. During the 2023 season, he went 33 for 35, hitting 94.3% of his field goals, and being as reliable as they came. If we include the playoffs in this, he went 44 for 46, hitting all 11 of his field goal attempts, meaning that he hit 96% of his kicks across Kansas City's 21 games. And when it came to extra points, he was also money, going 46 for 46 across all competitions. I know that Bucker didn't make the Pro Bowl last year, but when it came to the stats and the eye test, Bucker absolutely deserved to make it, because he may have been the best kicker in all of football. Now, I want you to imagine that the Kansas City Chiefs, with Bucker locked up, and with him having the job under wraps, decided to spend one of their draft picks on a kicker. And now, I want you to imagine that Andy Reid flat out says after the pick, yeah, this kicker we drafted? He has no shot at making the roster. Bucker's our guy. You would look at Kansas City and wonder what the heck they were doing. It would seem like one of the dumbest draft picks ever, and one of the biggest wastes of the pick ever. You've got an elite kicker, so you draft a kicker while admitting that this isn't even competition? So you fill zero needs and fill zero roster spots? A move like that would be absolutely and utterly moronic on so many levels, and I don't think it's hard to see why. Well, I bring that up because in 1982, for some inexplicable reason, that's exactly what the Green Bay Packers did. And when you hear the justification for why they did it, and what the heck they were thinking... Oh man, it is going to make you scratch your head and it's going to truly hammer home just how bad the Packers were in the late 70s and early 80s under Bart Starr's guidance. Because this is the story of one of the dumbest draft picks in the over century long history of the Green Bay Packers franchise. Before I talk about what exactly the Packers did at the kicker position at the 1982 NFL Draft and why it made no sense whatsoever... We need some context to understand what the situation was involving the Packers and their kicker. In 1981, the Green Bay Packers were not a very good football team. They finished the season with an 8-8 record, had a negative point differential, started 2-6, and, and even though they rebounded to somehow claw themselves back into playoff contention, completely faltered when it mattered most against the New York Jets, getting annihilated 28-3 in the final week of the season. In a game that you can learn more about, by clicking the card in the upper right corner. However, if there was one bright spot, and if there was one position that definitely did not need to be addressed if the Packers wanted to improve in 1982, it was that kicker with this guy right here that you've been watching this whole time. This is Jan Senerud, and he's one of the greatest kickers in the history of the NFL. In fact, many would argue that he is the greatest kicker in NFL history. By the time his career ended, Across his time with the American Football League and the National Football League, his 373 field goals would be the most all-time. He would make it to the Pro Bowl or AFL All-Star Game six times, would have three seasons where he led the league in field goals made, would have four seasons where he led the league in field goal percentage, and would rightly get inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1991 on the very first ballot. But of all his seasons in the NFL, his best one had to be that 1981 season with the Packers, where he was not just putting together the best season by any kicker in the league, but was putting together maybe the best season by any kicker all time at the time. In 1981, Stanerud went 22 for 24, hitting 91.7% of his field goals. Now, by today's standards, that is a solid season, but you have to understand that by the standards of 1981, that was almost unheard of. For some perspective, here is a chart showing the field goal percentage of every single kicker in 1981 who had at least 10 attempts, of which there were 29 of them. 
the average is somewhere around 65%. And you were pretty safe if you were above 60%. In second place was Rick Danmeyer of the Minnesota Vikings at 84%. He was the only kicker above 78%. And then, you've got Jan Sederud in a class of his own, towering over everyone at nearly 92%. In fact, Sederud was so good that he became the first qualified kicker in NFL history to have a season above 90%, with his field goal percentage being the highest single-season percentage at the time in league history. Only twice before had a kicker even gone above 85%, with Don Cockroft doing this in 1974 and Lou Groza doing this in 1953. And you can learn more about Groza by clicking the card in the upper right corner. And now, you had Stederud putting together an incredible 1981 campaign and coming back to Green Bay in 1982 looking to pick up right where he left off. Green Bay obviously needed a lot of help in a variety of positions on both sides of the ball. But if there's one thing that they didn't need, if it wasn't abundantly clear, it was a kicker. It's almost like when Disney's California Adventure opened up in 2001, and it was universally panned. The park needed a lot of help. However, if there was one thing it didn't need, it didn't need for Soren to be replaced, because that ride is incredible. Stanarud was sworn, if that makes sense for the Disney Parks people out there. So guess what the Packers did at the 1982 NFL Draft with one of their draft picks? Go on, take a guess. That's right, they drafted this man right here, SMU kicker Eddie Garcia. Garcia was a good kicker in college, don't get me wrong. He was named an AP Second Team All-Pro in 1981 after a 10-1 season where SMU declared themselves national champions and Southwest Conference champions. And Garcia was a big part in that, going 18 for 22. He ended his SMU career with 262 points scored, which was the third most in school history by the time he graduated, only behind Doak Walker and Eric Dickerson, which is some pretty good company to be in. His 18 field goals made in 1981 were the most in school history at the time in a single season. His field goal percentage in 1981 of 81.8% was the highest in school history at the time and is still the second highest in school history. And his 44 career field goals made is still an SMU record for most in a career, shattering the previous record when he was there held by Chipper Johnson, who made 26. He was a good player in college, but the Packers very clearly didn't need a kicker. It seemed like a complete waste. So that raises the question. Why the heck did they draft Eddie Garcia? If they had maybe the best kicker in football on their roster already in Jan Stenerud, as in this man right here, why draft Garcia? You might be thinking that Stenerud was possibly contemplating retirement, and that's why they did this, just as a contingency plan, but nope. Stenerud signed a contract to play for the Packers fairly early on in the 1982 calendar year, signing a contract on January 8th, so he was clearly coming back for another season. You might be thinking that Stenrud had some personal beef with Green Bay, but nope. You might be thinking that Stenrud was alleged to be taking drugs, or to be involved in some sort of illegal activity, or was under investigation by the league office and Commissioner Pete Rosell for something, but nope. You never heard anything about that. You might be thinking that the numbers were a bit of an anomaly, because Stenrud may have ended the season cold, but nope. He ended the season hitting his final 11 field goals. You might be thinking that even though he was accurate, he couldn't kick from long distance, and Green Bay lost a lot of opportunities that way, but nope. He was 2 for 2 from 50 plus yards, being one of 6 kickers in football that year to hit multiple kicks from 50 plus. And his 53 yard field goal at one point was the third longest kick in the league in 1981. So let's call it what it is. There seems to be, at least on the surface, no justifiable reason for the Packers to take Garcia and waste a draft pick on a kicker when they have this man right here, Jan Stenerud, right there. Well, Bart Starr cleared up all the confusion and explained why the Packers drafted him. Because according to Starr, I kid you not, the reason why the Packers drafted Garcia was, Garcia provides good flexibility during training camp when we don't want to kick Jan to death. Seriously. The Packers choose Garcia so they could have another kicker in training camp. I'm sorry, what? Okay, so let me get this straight. 
you drafted Garcia so that you could have a second kicker in training camp. So you basically admitted that Garcia serves you no purpose during the season. Because in the regular season, you're not keeping two kickers on the roster. Garcia will be there just to relieve some of the pressure off of Sederud's leg in training camp. Because you don't want a 40-year-old to kick a ton. But after that, he'll be gone and will serve you no use. You admitted that you didn't need to find a kicker. You just needed someone who would kick the ball for a bit in practice. You know, uh, y you know there's this thing called undrafted free agency, right? Maybe you've heard of it. You can sign guys after the draft or sign a veteran to fill that duty. If you know that a backup kicker has no chance at making a roster, but you want to carry two kickers in camp, you can always sign a guy to do that. A lot of teams do that. The number two kicker in football in 1981 from a field goal percentage standpoint, right behind Stenrud as I mentioned before, was Rick Danmeyer of the Minnesota Vikings. He was an undrafted free agent. The number five kicker in football in 1981 from a field goal percentage standpoint was Super Bowl champion kicker Ray Wershing of the San Francisco 49ers. He was an undrafted free agent. The vast majority of kickers in this league are undrafted free agents. This is all to say that you could easily find people who don't get drafted and who aren't on rosters to do what you're asking. This is all to say that if you just need a camp body, there are plenty of options available, and you don't have to waste precious draft capital on someone to do that. It's the equivalent of only being able, as a company, to hire three employees in a given year, but you can have an unlimited number of interns, and you decide, as one of your three employees, to hire someone whose sole responsibility is to make coffee for the office. Like, you didn't need to do that. You could have gotten an intern. Why waste a spot on someone that doesn't have a long-term future with the company and doesn't have a chance of making the company money when there's plenty of guys out there that know how to make coffee? Well, it's the same thing here. Why waste a spot on someone who, by your own admission, has no future with the team? whose sole purpose is to be here for a month during games that don't count, and who, even in the best-case scenario, cannot possibly make the team. And I don't want to hear, well, it's the 10th round with pick number 264. Who are you possibly finding past that pick anyways? That's something you can say to justify taking a gamble on a player late, like a high-potential athlete who might not have played football in a while. That is not something you say to justify taking a guy who has a 0% chance of making the roster. The year before, in 1981 for instance, there were a ton of notable names to go over the final three rounds of the draft, including Jim Jensen of the Miami Dolphins, who played in the NFL for 12 seasons and was basically the original Taysom Hill, Jim Wilkes of the New Orleans Saints, who played 183 games for the Saints over 13 seasons and recorded 49 sacks, and Clint Didier of Washington, who played eight seasons in the NFL, won two Super Bowls, and scored 21 touchdowns as one of the best tight ends in football for a period of time. And heck, in round 12 of this 1982 draft, the Packers chose TCU wideout Phil Epps, and he had a solid career, playing eight seasons in the league and recording 192 catches for 2,884 yards and 14 touchdowns in his seven years with the Packers. So no, the justification for this makes no sense. No matter how you want to slice it, it makes no sense at all. This was literally taking a draft pick and setting it on fire. As for what happened with this team behind me right here in the Green Bay Packers, I don't think it's going to come as a surprise to you that they did not keep Eddie Garcia around. He was cut before the start of the 1982 season, so good job Green Bay. You just completely wasted a draft pick on a guy that never had a shot at making the roster, and you even admitted had no shot at making the roster. That must feel really, really good. Now, Eddie Garcia did kick in the NFL eventually. In 1984, he was actually signed by the Green Bay Packers because Jan Stenerud was on the Minnesota Vikings and was absolutely crushing it there. The problem was that Garcia was absolutely terrible. He went 3-for-9 on field goals, and he never played again after the 1984 season. He missed 66% of his kicks. Two out of three ain't bad when it comes to meatloaf, but when it comes to the percentage of kicks that you're missing... That's downright abysmal. There's no other way to put it. That is awful. Pro Football Reference gives each player a score called approximate value. And it's a whole number just grading how their career is. And Garcia's number was negative one. 
That is awful. I have a better score of approximate value than Eddie Garcia. That's how bad he was in the NFL. So, yeah, I'm, I'm sure the Packers really, really like that draft pick. Also, I should note that the guy we were talking about in this video, besides Garcia, was Jan Stenerud. I don't have it with the Packers, but I do have his autographed helmet with the Kansas City Chiefs. One of the best kickers in NFL history. Proudly display this in my collection. So if you're a general manager watching this video, there's an obvious takeaway here. Don't draft players who have a 0% chance of making the roster and can do the job that literally anyone can do. If you want to have two kickers on the 90-man roster, not because you want competition, but because you just want to give a guy like Justin Tucker or Harrison Bucker or Brandon Aubrey a rest every now and then in practice, then just sign a kicker off the street. There's hundreds of them. Don't waste a valuable draft pick and waste valuable draft capital on such a thing. Don't waste a pick on a guy that, by your own admission, won't contribute anything to the team when it matters most. Because when it came to the backer strategy involving Jan Stenerud, as in this man right here, and their decision to draft not his replacement, but an occasional practice fill-in for one month, I think the Packers were kicking themselves. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe, as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.